All right, with those cold temps last week, fall is certainly here, and it's triggered more than just changing leaf colors. So many of you know that it's a time for fall migration of birds, but today in our Smoky Mountain Minute, we're going to hear about the butterfly migration that happens right here in the Smokies. We have Aaron Cantor, Manager of Science Literacy and Research at Great Smoky Mountains Institute at Tremont, to tell us more about it. Happy to have you here, Aaron. Hey, I'm excited to be here. So we were saying, because you grew up in Florida, I grew I up in Texas, yes. so I knew that the monarch's big deal for them to come through did not realize they come through East Tennessee in the Smokies. So they do. So they they have this pathway that on their way back to Mexico. Yeah. Um, and in Cades Cove, which is an area in East Tennessee in the Smokies, which many folks will be familiar with, uh, there is a plethora of different plant species that they really like to nectar on. And so it's really a thorough way, as we're understanding, um, for them on their way back to the, the Mexico. And That's even better. Yeah. That the beautiful monarchs and then the backdrop of the Smokies. It's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good time of year. Yeah. So let's talk about um, the fact that these monarchs are tagged because yes. they're delicate, they they're are. thin, so how on earth do you tag a butterfly? That is a very common question and they are, they do seem so delicate, yeah. they're fragile. The way that they fly is really seems sort of happenstance, they're just yeah. kind of floating around. But if you think about monarchs in particular and, and a lot of butterfly species, this generation of monarchs that is going back to Mexico is flying maybe thousands of miles and so they do have quite a resilience but either way we do want to be really careful and so we have this little tiny adhesive you can think of it as on apples when you get an apple it has that little tag on it yes kind of like okay. a food tag that was actually the original one that that researchers Canadian researchers used back in the 70s trying to figure out where they go we actually only found out about this migration in the 1970s and it was through tagging okay now when i say find out about the migration of course there were folks in mexico and michoacan indigenous folks in that area who have been aware of this for thousands of years in fact a lot of their culture dia de los muertos and celebration mm -hmm. is re related to the return of the monarchs but uh, a woman named Nora Urquhart and her husband Fred started this huge citizen science program. So this way of getting a lot of people involved, putting these little tiny tags on the wings of butterflies. And one of those tags was found by a woman named Catalina mm -hmm. in Mexico. And there was a collaboration. And that's how we knew that this migration was all of North America from Canada to Mexico. Well, and we're learning so much through these tagged butterflies too. And we were talking about the fact that their population is declining. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple different theories, but one is supported by science. And the theory that is supported by science for why their population is declining is monarch caterpillars are only, those eggs are only laid on one type of plant a genus of plant or a family of plant called milkweed. There's a ton of different milkweed species and they're all really beautiful, but the caterpillars can only eat milkweed. And actually in eating milkweed, it's why they become poisonous and they have a resistance oh. to predation. But with a lot of different herbicides throughout the Midwest, which is a big area where monarchs originate, um, we're kind of killing out all of the species. And so it's really important that we in our own lives kind of plant milkweed or try to cultivate a uh, more pesticide herbicide free landscape for, for the monarchs. Because our monarchs are pollinators, so we need them around. They're pollinators, <laughs> yeah. they're beautiful. Yeah. Yes, we need them to stay. Okay, Erin, okay. some really good info. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Be sure to stick around. We're going to have your final look at your forecast and also see what our friends over in Living East Tennessee will be talking about today. We'll be right back.